I wouldn't trade our autonomy position okay. with anyone. So if I, I'll let you claim that you're <coughs> that you're in the lead, if, okay. if you like. Yes, I like. Order, order them afterwards. <laughs> oh, you know, I. Because I'm I, sure you study this. I, I do, but you know, the, the one thing in autonomous, um, I think you've got to look at who actually has vehicles on the road. GM Super Cruise, Waymo self-driving, Argo self-driving system. What do all of these technologies have in common? The answer is that they're fake. Now, before you get triggered and uh, click off this video and unsubscribe, let me tell you what I mean by fake. Fake is an acronym that I created that stands for fully autonomous in a known environment. Fake. The reason why it's fake is it's more descriptive of the technology that they're, they're generating, right? The reason why it's fully autonomous in a known environment is because Waymo, GM Super Cruise, Argo, they, they all rely on fully detailed 3D maps, engineering maps of the city that they're going to be driving in. If they go outside that fully detailed mapped area, it won't work. The technology relies on LiDAR to position itself inside of that map, but it heavily relies on engineering maps that are created by hand that are very intensive to make. That's why it's not scalable. It's more like deterministic. It's, it's a lot like industry 3.0 point to point integration. And that's why it's fake, right? It's, it's fully autonomous in a known environment. And, and I don't think people are really hearing this message. So that's why I wanted to create this video. Tesla, on the other hand, is creating a full self-driving system, full stop. It's full self-driving because it relies only on cameras. So the technology is actually out there today. They're not having to rely on expensive LIDAR. They're relying on cameras and training their AI models to develop real world AI. What is real world AI? Real world AI is, is what they're gonna use in the Tesla bot, but essentially it's be able to drop a computer, uh, an AI chip with cameras that are able to sense the world around it. And it's gonna be able to figure out what's going on. It's going to be able to detect all the objects around it. It's going to be able to determine the location. It's going to be able to position itself within that location. And it's going to be able to know what to do, right? It's going to be able to react and respond to the environment as if it were self-aware. It's kind of like self-aware skate. It's kind of like industry 4.0. We say all the time that Tesla is an industry 4.0 company. That's one of the reasons that they are heavily relying on their machine learning and AI and cameras, as opposed to engineering maps and LIDAR and geofences, fake technology. Tesla's the real deal. So I wanna talk about three examples in this video to illustrate my point, and we'll end this video with a question for you guys. So make sure to stick around to the end. If this content is interesting, make sure to subscribe. We talk about all things Industry 4.0, IoT and digital transformation. Tesla's one of the leaders in that space, so obviously we talk about Tesla quite often, and let's get into the video. This video was sponsored by HiveMQ. Use the link in the description to get started building your MQTT broker and connect up to 100 devices absolutely free. Now let's get into the video. So number one, Waymo. Waymo is a full self-driving company that operates a cab service in a suburb outside of Phoenix, Arizona, Chandler. For those of you guys that may know, I used to live in Phoenix about a year ago and I've seen those cars driving around. But one of the things that they don't really like to advertise is that one, it's fake and you know fully autonomous in a known environment. But two, more often than not, there's actually a, a driver sitting in the front seat ready to take over. So it kind of defeats the point. You know, they are training their they are they are training their cars. They are trying to make it better, which is great. But the, in the case that they don't have a driver in the front seat, they have a dispatch center, and the team of dispatchers are ready to take over remotely in the case that the, the car doesn't know what it's doing, right? So I wanna play a clip from a Veritasium video. Uh, it's actually uh, Veritasium, a, a YouTube story of propaganda. It's funny because Veritasium is one of my favorite channels, but I actually lost a little bit of respect for him in that video because it wasn't just a sponsored video by Waymo. The whole entire video was propaganda, right? Veritasium is uh, Latin for truth and he did not tell the whole truth in that video. He didn't even mention the fact that this technology was limited to areas that their team of engineers have created highly detailed engineering maps for the city. He totally left that part out. Monitoring the environment around them and making decisions based on what they find. The way the LiDAR works is it shoots out invisible laser beams scanning around millions of times a second and then it detects the reflection and how long it takes to come back 
allows you to determine how far it is to that object. So what it's doing is like painting a 3D picture of the world. This is certainly one very important aspect of how Waymo's vehicles work. The LiDAR and other sensors allow the cars to identify other vehicles, pedestrians, the color of traffic lights, and other live aspects of a driving situation. Yeah. What Muller completely fails to mention is that the cars also require highly detailed maps to be prepared for any area that they want to operate in. As Waymo themselves describe it in their safety report, before our cars drive in any location, our team builds our own detailed three-dimensional maps that highlight information such as road profiles, curbs and sidewalks, lane markers, crosswalks, traffic lights, stop signs, and other road features. Rather than rely on GPS, the Waymo driver cross-references our pre-built maps with real-time sensor data to precisely determine their location on the road. It wasn't until nine minutes into the video where he actually talked about how the technology works, about the LiDAR, how that works, and the cameras, but then he just left it at that. And the viewer is left to assume that the car is smart enough to figure that stuff out for itself. It's not. I'll play a clip now, and you'll see the actual uh, resolution of LiDAR maps isn't that high. Its accuracy is pretty detailed, right? It's the same technology that my Roborock S5 Max Robo, ro robot vacuum uses, LiDAR, to know that if it's about to run into a table leg, right? It, it knows by sending out light and receiving the uh, reflection back how far the things around it are in a three-dimensional space. That's really good if you don't want to use AI to train your models, right? It's it's sort of a it's sort of a shortcut. It's sort of a band-aid, right? You know pretty accurately that hey, this is there's an object there. I don't want to hit that object, right? But in order for it to know there's a stop sign and a stoplight, that's where it's piecing together the the detailed engineering maps that the engineers created versus Tesla, you could plop it in any city, any street and it'll know that it's a street, it'll detect stop signs, it'll drive as if even if it's never driven there before, that's where the power of AI and self-driving. And so it's just kind of funny. It's kind of disturbing actually that YouTube channels that we go to for information are now spreading propaganda, right? And I'll link, I'll link the video where I got that clip from. You guys can watch it yourself. It's about an hour documentary. Uh, so only if you're a nerd like me, you can watch that after this. But uh, let's go into number two. Example number two, GM Super Cruise. I was watching a video on uh, more Doug DeMuro. Doug DeMuro is a very popular YouTube, talks about cars, right? All things cars. This is a brand new Tesla Model 3 performance. Well, one of the quirks and features that he sort of failed to mention on his second channel when talking about specifically how GM Super Cruise technology is better than Tesla full self-driving. Well, he, he mentioned it at least in this video that GM Super Cruise is limited to highways that have been mapped. Now, number two limit of Super Cruise is it only works on mapped roads. Now, a lot of Tesla people consider this to be a huge limitation of Super Cruise, but the truth is Super Cruise has mapped basically every highway in the United States and a lot of highways in Canada near population centers, Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa. So that means if you're on a long road trip, Super Cruise will work because you're driving on major interstate highways. It's pretty much got all of those mapped. They have also mapped a lot of local highways too, and I think they're getting better and better with that, trying to get like the more important state highways or US highways than areas, but all the interstates are done and most of the state highways. All around San Diego driving it, it worked on every highway that I tried. Frankly, I think 90% of drivers will almost never find themselves in a situation where Super Cruise doesn't work um, and they're obviously adding more roads all the time. Now, this is a big limitation. Super Cruise works on highways, but Tesla's system works better, you know, on, on, on surface streets. You don't need to be on a highway or a mapped road. Right, so it's fake, fully autonomous in a known environment. You can only use that technology on highways that they have mapped versus Tesla's autopilot, which is not full self-driving, just, hey, it's just autopilot, self-steer, auto-accelerate, auto-brake, keeps you in the lane. That will work on any highway because it's using the, the full self-driving, because it's using the machine learning and AI to determine where are the road lanes, what, what's in front of me, oh, that's a car in front of me. They even got rid of radar, so it's literally using camera data to determine distance based on the stereo stop, stopic, stereoscopic expect. It can determine distance. It can determine everything through cameras. You know, it's a really simple analogy, but humans drive with two cameras and Tesla drives with eight. And it has a supercomputer that is capable of processing billions of frames per second. And we just don't have that capability. 
So if humans can do it, Tesla can definitely do it with, with Tesla Vision. Compare that to the GM Super Cruise, which, which does use cameras. It's not, it's not capable of doing their, uh, their full self-driving, right? Because it doesn't have the LiDAR, but it's able to do like autopilot, like Super Cruise in a, in a lane. It can also lane change, but it's limited to roads that have been mapped. And Doug DeMuro sort of makes that seem like that's an advantage. I think if we start to get into urban areas, I'm not using autopilot. And I hope that a lot of Tesla people aren't using autopilot either in those situations. The other thing that he, he also said was an advantage of why it's better uh, was that you don't have to touch the wheel in GM Super Cruise. He says it's fully hands off. With that in mind, let's talk about why I think Super Cruise is better than Autopilot. The biggest reason is you are totally hands off. Tesla Autopilot is great. It really is the second best of these systems. But the simple reality is that like all these other systems that don't monitor your eyes, you do have to tap the steering wheel every 30 seconds or so, or 10 or 15, depending on the brand, to let the car know, hey, I'm still here, I'm still here, tap. I'm still here at TAP, and that kind of babysitting of the system just gets tiresome after a while. Like you're sitting there and you're looking ahead, you're paying attention, but ding, you have to touch the wheel. Okay, fine. Ding, you have to, I mean, it just, it's, it's repetitive, frankly, and it's not really all that necessary. And that's why Cadillac system is great because you're completely hands off and you can be hands off for a long, long time on the road. Now, otherwise the systems are pretty similar. It's worth noting. Tesla has, if you're driving a Tesla autopilot, you have to touch the wheel every so often because you are responsible for the car still. The way that GM does this is they monitor with a cockpit facing camera that your eyes are on the road and paying attention. That's, and if you look away, they'll take it out of Super Cruise, right? Tesla, if you don't touch the wheel every so often, it'll take you out of autopilot. Well, Tesla has a cockpit facing camera. And so if they wanted to, they could really easily through software make that the autopilot engagement feature is just by looking. So there's probably a reason why they don't do that. And the reason probably is, is because it's not meant to be fully hands off. It's meant to be hands on, right? So you could take over at any time. I mean, until vehicles are level five autonomy, which Tesla will probably get there first, until that and the vehicle is shipped without a steering wheel, you're probably gonna be responsible for the vehicle at the end of the day, right? It's still in beta, but the rate of acceleration on Tesla's part is going much, much faster. GM has just introduced, I think by 2023, they'll have the ability to do remote firmware updates through their new software platform, Ultify, is coming to vehicles starting in 2023. We just announced Altify that allows us to uh, quickly update and you know roll out things to, to customers after they buy the vehicle. Think about it. Your vehicle can get better through ownership. So again, I don't know how Mary Barra can claim that they're leading the way, but it's not a technology that's available till 2023. So with that said, let's move on to the last example. And this one should really drive it home for you guys. GM just did a, an opening of their factory, a reopening of their factory zero and President Biden actually had a speech. So let's see what he had to say here. As the United States of America, and it starts here in Detroit, in the auto industry in Detroit, it's leading the world in electric vehicles. You know how critical it is? Mary, I can remember talking to you way back in January about the need for America to lead in electric vehicles. And I can remember your dramatic announcement that by 2035, GM would be 100% electric. You changed the whole story, Mary, wherever, wherever you are. There you are. You did, Mary. You electrified the entire automobile industry. I'm serious. You led, and it matters. And drastically improving the climate by reducing hundreds of millions of barrels of oil that will not be used when we're all electric. So as you can see in this uh, clip, Biden is clear, Joe Biden is clearly inflating the capabilities and the leadership of Mary Barra uh, specifically and General Motors. No one who has their brain on straight can come to the conclusion that GM is somehow leading the way of electric vehicles unless you're talking about leading the way straight into the ground. A fully electric fleet by 2035 is GM's goal. I'll give you guys a little hint. Tesla's fleet is already 100% electric, and they all have the technology capable of full self-driving. While other manufacturers said, hey, you know, we can't, we can't train full self-driving with AI because AI training is too expensive. Tesla said, hey, that's no problem. We'll develop Dojo Supercomputer. 
I don't see how you could come to the conclusion that GM is leading the way in electric vehicles, and I definitely don't see how you could come to the conclusion they're leading the way in AI, full self-driving. Tesla has over 5 billion autopilot miles with their fleet of over a million Teslas on the road. So with that amount of data, that's, that's valuable, right? We know Facebook is, you know, Metaverse is one of the most valuable companies in the world because of the data that they collect on us. Tesla is one of the most valuable companies in the world because of the data they collect on their cars. It's plain and simple. And they don't spend any money on marketing. They don't spend any money on lobbying. I, I, have, a, I have a weird feeling that's why there's kind of collusion between the US government, the United Auto Workers Union, and General Motors, and they sort of seem to hate Tesla. There's like this anti-Tesla movement, even penetrating the YouTube space with channels like Veritasium and Doug DeMuro sort of seem to being on that payroll too. But with that said, I don't have any ill will for General Motors. In fact, our mission is to save and create jobs in the United States by helping manufacturers do more with less. And we teach one of the first steps in order to do more with less, in order to innovate with technology, is to admit that you have a problem. And Mari Barra clearly doesn't think that she has a problem. So that means she's either lying to her investors or she's incompetent or there's a combination of the both. But until Mary Barra admits that they have a problem and admits that Tesla is leading the way, I don't have very much high hopes for General Motors. I do hope that they pull it together. I do hope that they can not go bankrupt in the next decade, but I've put my money where my mouth is. I actually had put a deposit on Model Y. I've since canceled that deposit and I've actually been going all in on Tesla, buying Tesla stock with every spare dollar that I have because I'm that convicted in the technology. So let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have one of these vehicles? Have you used GM Super Cruise or have you driven in a Waymo vehicle? Do you have a Tesla? And the second question I have is if you guys are getting a new car in the next year, will that car be electric? Let me know down in the comments below. I love reading your guys' comments. Make sure to subscribe and there's a link to our join our community Discord server where we have a lot of conversation with a lot of smart engineers, men, women, and alike. So make sure to click that link below to join our community Discord server. Thanks again to HiveMQ for sponsoring this video, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.